Rabotai, listen to this beautiful piece in Sefer Midrash Rabbam, in Seder Vayelech, in Pasha Ted. He brings down over here a character trait, that if we are able to have this character trait, or work on this character trait, few days, few days before Elul, we don't feel that, we don't feel that judgment, Rabotai, we don't feel that trepidation, that all the fear that what can happen, he brings down over here, if a person has his need, this character trait is going, to be, it's going to allow him to lengthen his days. And I want to show you over here how sad it is, how very sad it is, that as we live in this temporary world, we think about everything, we prepare for everything. What's going to be now? What's going to be tomorrow? What's going to be in 10 years from now? The, uh, the pension plan, the Medicaid, whatever it is, we are always preparing in this world. Look how sad it is, and we're never preparing the botai. We're maximizing our potential in this world for the materialistic things, but not for the next world, which is the spiritual. We're minimizing there, but maximizing here. It's a humongous, humongous problem. Look what he says over here. He brings out like this in Sefer Midrash Rabbah. Amru Rabbateinu Maaseh Hayab B'Meir B'Shimon Ben Chalafta. Our rabbi said that, that there was a story in the times of Rabbi Shimon ben Chalafta. Shahalach le Brit Mila, he went to a Brit Mila, there was a circumcision. Vesa'av sham aviv shatinok. And over there, the father of the son who was being circumcised was eating. Vishka otan yain yashan ben shavu shanim. And he gave them an aged wine of seven years. Amar Lahem, he said to them, the father of the child said to Rabbi Shem ben Chalafta and other people that were eating with him at this meal, Amar Lahem, Min hayayin hazeh anim miyashen l'simchato shal beni. This wine that is seven years old, he wants to give it to his son once he gets married. He wants to even age it more because that's how good it was. If I age it even more, how much more beautiful, how much more... Tasty the wine is going to be. Hayu so adim ad They were eating until the half of the night. Rabbi Shimon Chalafta shayab batuach al kocho. Rabbi Shimon Chalafta, who was assured of his strength, over here the et yourself. What means al kocho? Koach zuchoto v'lo yamitra min amizikin. The strength of his merits, and he was not afraid of the damages. Because you have to remember, Rabotai, over here, the Chachamim, at that time, if you, were, you would come out at night, where there's nobody there and it's dark, they would be able to come and meet demons, the Malachim of himself, meaning the angel of death. So he was not afraid. Why? Because he had a lot of merits, and he had a lot of Torah. So he was not afraid. So what happened over here? Rabbi Shimon, Chalav Tushayeh, Batuk, Al-Kachor, Yatzalu Bechat, Yalala, Lalech, Lero. In the middle of the night, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Chalav, got up, and he went back to the city. Matasha Malachamavid, but there he found over there while he was traveling, he found the angel of death. Vera Mishune, but he saw him. His appearance was very different, not like usual, because remember they, they were accustomed to coming into interactions with them. The eight yourself says, Kolonel, what is Mishune? Mishune Bemidato. He was different in his character, in the way he looked. Kihayaka Sovichamato Gadol. Because his anger and his wrath was very great. That's when he, when he appeared angry, when the angel of death appeared angry. He was shocked. He's like, what's this? My high, what's, what's going on today? Why are you different than any other day? Why is your face so bad? Because... Mahmatarus, as if somebody's angry because of their pain, he sung the Malachama, that's how you look like. What, what, what's different than any other day? Rabotai, the major Rabbi continues. Amr lo miyata. So Rabbi Shimon Khalaf that tells, he knows he's the angel of death. He says, Who are you? Amr lo, he said, I am the messenger from Hashem. Amr lo maata mishune. So he tells him, why is your face different than any other time? Why do you look very angry? Why do you look very upset? Amor he said, Ani, 
מסיכתן של בריאות. I am upset from the way the people speak. Listen. From the way the people speak. Why? They're cursing. They speak Lashnara. What, what happened? Rabotai, over here he brings down. He says in the Ed Yosef, מסיכתן, פירש מדבורה מקשים, from the hard words, the way they speak, the, the difficult things that they say. I can't handle it, he says. Why? What was so difficult? What, he cursed? He's, what did he do? No. They say this and this I'm going to do in the future. But the person does not know when he's going to die. And he's already preparing 30 years in advance. 30 years, 40 years. Say what's going to be when he's going to be a pastor plan. He's going to come learn to write. Then he's going to start putting out the film. Rabotai, he doesn't know when he's going to go. He's planning ahead. Rabotai, this is what the Malach HaMavid was upset about. The way we speak in this world, we are so concerned what's going to be with us in 10 years from now, in one year, in 20 years. But Rabotai, the Malach HaMavid is saying, I don't understand. How are you guys so sure? You guys don't even know you might go tomorrow. So what's there to be confident about? Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. A person can plan. A person can make goals. But don't make that the primary thing of your life. Torah, Rabotai. What's going to be with you in the next world? Rabotai, listen what the Malach HaMavet says, Rabbi Shem Ben Chalaf. Ha'ish, that man, meaning the Malabrit, the father of this, the guy who he gave the Brit Mila to, that man that you were eating with him, and he said to them, and he said to you guys, from this wine I want to give to his son when he's going to have the chuba, when he's going to get married. He's going to age it even more to show the son what kind of good wine that is. He says, how can he speak? How can he say such a thing? He says his time already came that he has to take the child after 30 days. Here you have the father under his own son's circumcision already planning what's going to be, what he's going to do with this wine, how he's going to give it to him on the day of his wedding. And the Malach Hamav, the angel of death, is so upset with this whole idea that people plan ahead and he's telling Rabbi Shem Khalafta, he's going to take the child in 30 days because that's when his time has come. And here people are planning ahead. Rabbi Tai continues and he says like this. Amar lo, so what happened now? So Rabbi Shem Khalafta sees that the Malach Hamavit, he told him about the child when he's going to die. So now Rabbi Shem Khalafta wants to know when he's going to die. Here we go, Rabotai. Listen to the beautiful insight from Midrash Rabbah. What does it mean, Rabotai? What does it mean to increase one's days in this world? And how do you do it? Amar Loi, so Rabbi Shem ben Chalavta said to the angel of death, Har Eli at Perki, show me my time. Show me the day that he's going to die. Amar Loi, he said to him, the angel of death said to Rabbi Shem ben Chalavta, Lo Alecha. Listen to this, Rabotai. Not on you and not on people like you to have control. I don't have control. I don't have control over people like you. It doesn't, I don't know when you're going to die. Even if it was decreed on you to die a certain day, that can change. Why? Because he explains. Because explains. At times Hashem wants your good deeds. And He gives you life. Rabotai Ba'az doing good deeds, Hashem gives you life. And He continues to say, like the Pasuk says, Shinema, like the Pasuk says, Yirat Hashem to Sif Yamim. This is what I want to show you, Rabotai. Fear of a heaven, Rabotai, fear of God will add days to your life. Rabotai, when it comes to serving a Kaddish Baruch Hu, it's wanting to serve Hashem by road, Chas Rabotai. 
but it's another thing to serve Hashem with passion, but it's also another thing to serve Hashem with fear. I'll give an example. One or two examples. How does a person know if he's God fearing or not? How does he know? Very simple. You know, the past, whatever it was, past week we were speaking about no talking, no phones in the shul, correct? I'm asking you a question. If we have fear of Hashem, if we have fear of Hashem, would we ever speak in the shul, especially during davening? No. You agree or not? If we have fear of Hashem, would we speak? No. So what does that show us? That we don't have fear of Hashem. We're just coming and making it chas v'shem like a social club. Look at the Mishnah Bureau writes and these people that speak in shul, those shuls in the end will become churches chas v'shem rabotai. <clears throat> a person needs to know. He sees he has no Yerushalayim. Even worse than rabotai than talking, in the middle of davening, or in the middle of chazar shot, or even not then, Stam in general, I've seen it, Rabbi, very sad. People take out their phones in the shul. And now they start looking at their watches. And the whiskeys that they're going to, or the food they're going to eat. Or the place they're going to go. Or movies they watch. Somebody even told me something fast that people walk, look at women during, in the synagogue. Rabbi, are you, are we serious? We have your shaman. We don't have your shaman. We think we have your shaman because we put on a kippah. We put on a black suit, white shirt, Rabbi, we don't have the appearance is not as important as what's really inside. A person has to look presentable, but Rabotai, your actions show just the opposite than the way you dress. And that's a very big problem. This is doing down, but what about when we go to Blenheim today? You have Torah everywhere. Anywhere you go, shuls are packed. Beit Majors, everywhere you go, people learn Torah. But what happens when you go to a lecture, right? After you eat your sushi or pizza, whatever they give you over there. You start listening to the rabbi. In the middle of the lecture while the rabbi is teaching Divrei, Elohim, Chayim, the words of the living God, you take out your phone. Rabotai, the honest truth is, are we afraid? I don't have to say, we're not afraid. We think we're afraid, Rabotai. We think we are afraid, we're not. Only should something happen, we are afraid. Then Chas What's the proof, Rabotai? What's the proof? You know, if Chas V'shalom, if you just, can imagine one time, Lolein Rabotai, if somebody sued you, Chasusham, just Lolein, I don't know, Lolein, if they would sue you first, Rabotai, you know you have to get lawyers, you know you have to pay them, now you're not going to sleep, now you're going to worry, even when you go to court, you're worried, even though you might have done nothing wrong, Rabotai, but why, why are you worrying, why, why, what's going to happen, what's going to happen already, Rabotai, because this is the reality, what we don't see, we don't fear, that's why a person has to make it in himself a reality. He has to bring Hashem down. He had, like the Ramah says in the Shulchan Aleph, Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. A person has to constantly see Hashem before his eyes. He has to. Rabbi, there's, there's no other way but going through this world if you do not have your Shemai. You can have Torah, you can dive, and you can look religious, Rabbi. But if you have no fear of Shemaim, what is it worth? If you have no fear of heaven, Rabotai, what is it worth? Look what's in Masech Shabbat. A person who learns Torah, but has no fear of Shemaim. How is he different than a Chamor, Rabotai? How is he different? How are you different than Google? He also has information. Rabotai, we need to understand. Our Midor have to change. Our character traits have to change. Our way of thinking has to change. Our way of behavior has to change. Especially Rabotai when you're in a shul or when a rabbi is teaching you Torah and you take out your Torah in the middle of uh, teaching you Torah. I'm talking about when the rabbis are giving you shiurim. How much more so when the rabbi is teaching you halakha, gimora, which are higher levels than shiurim. When regular shul, they're wearing because now you always take the Torah. And still we have the chutzpah to take our, to take our phones out. That shows no Yerushalayim. But the problem over here is not this. The problem here is greater. When we don't show your Shammai, the Basik says, you're at Hashem, to see your meme. The Basik says, a person has fear of Hashem, it's going to add days to his life. And not only that, the Malach HaMaw, the angel of death, cannot even have control over you. But let's go the other way around. It's implied, if a person does not have fear of Hashem, what's going to end up happening? Chas V'Shalom? Lulling Rabotai. He can shorten his own life, Rabotai. Why do you need this? And then you start running to rabbis, and then you start running to doctors, 
And then you start paying money over here, money over there. And Abu Tai, we come before Rosh Hashanah. Literally, we're four days or three days, four days, whatever. We're mamish right before Rosh Hashanah. A person comes to a shul, Rabotai, to walk into a shul where it's all about money, shalom, where it's all about politics, shalom. If you walk into a shul where they're speaking, there's nothing for you what to do there that Rosh Hashanah. Try to find yourself a minion where they don't speak Rabotai. Your whole life, your everything, everything Rabotai. Look into the Sephora culture, Akdoshim. In the holy books, everything is dependent. Your whole year is dependent on one day of Rosh Hashanah. This one day, what's going to be? How's going to be? Who's going to be? Rabotai, don't allow these two days of Rosh Hashanah, especially when we're in America, outside of Israel. Even in Israel, have two days of Rosh Hashanah. But we over here, Rabotai, do not allow these two days of Rosh Hashanah to go through your fingers like this. Do not be foolish, Rabotai. Do not waste your time making barbecues. Do not waste your time spending time at home with your wife speaking to her. Do not waste your time with your kids about that right now. You go to the you dive in. You come home, you have a suda. Have a normal suda, you with your family, whatever it is, you do the simanim. After you finish eating, you bench. You have to go to sleep, you want to go to sleep because you want to be able to get up early. Because anybody who passes net, his whole mazal can sleep the whole year. After that, Rabotai, you dive in net, you go back home, you do kiddush, whatever it might be. Take your boys, whatever the situation might be, or yourself. After you finish eating, come back straight to the base. I measure Rabotai. Do not waste your time on Rosh Hashanah with your family, with your ha, hi, hi, baba. Rabotai, this day Rosh Hashanah determines your whole year. You want a year? Year of Shamayim to see year of Hashem to see Vyamim. This day, everything you should fear of heaven. But this day you want to show Hashem. I have fear of you, Rebbe Shalom. There's nothing for me in this world if it's not for you and not for your Torah. Why else am I here? For what purpose, Rabotai, if it's not to serve you and not to learn your Torah? That's what Rabotai, we have to understand. The authors brought down the Rebbe Yeruchim and the Zohar Kodesh. They, were, they, they moaned the concept of how people, Rabotai, live in this world feel, feel, feeling that they are here forever, not knowing that one day they're going to die, Rabotai. If in your mind you're so confident that you're never going to die, Rabotai, that is a humongous problem. The Malach Hamavar himself is upset with these kind of people. Why? Because he says they're going to die. They're going to die. Well, it's going to be in a few months, a few years. But you're going to die. What are you doing? What are you preparing, Rabotai? A person has to, this Rosh Hashanah, Bezrat Hashem, another. Redirect your focus. Redirect your focus, Rabotai, and listen carefully. From this world to the next world, I am not telling you not to live. You need to live, you need to work, you need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to be with your wife, you need to be with your children, you need to do all these things normally. But Rabotai, add the spice of the ingredient of Yirat Hashem, then you're going to have Tosif Yamin. Add the ingredient of fear of God, then it's going to lengthen your days. And the beauty of that is that not only is going to lengthen your days because when you become God-fearing, your wife becomes God-fearing, your children become God-fearing, people around you become God-fearing. Rabotai, you just change a whole environment around you to come and serve Hashem. You think Hashem is going to forget it? Rabotai, remember what we do in this world has impact around us in our environment, but not only that, how much more impact it has in the next world so there a person always has, always has to make the right decisions. Like when Mary Eliyahu Shlita says something fascinating. How does one know if he has Yerusha Shomai? How does one check himself if he has Yerusha Shomai or not? How do you do it, Rabotai? He says a very one simple rule. What I'm about to do, would Hashem be happy with this, yes or no? A person wants to watch sport. Eh, whatever, I don't know. A person wants to watch TV, low lane, who knows? Rabotai, I said sports because I don't want Hashem movies, low lane. There's nothing more to talk about. Because it's pre too. There's nothing to talk about. It's the modest woman there. But Hashem Rabotai, a person wants to watch sports. He has to ask himself one question. Is this what Hashem wants from me right now? In order to be able to answer that, you have to know Halachot very well. You have to know the Halachot of Bittal Torah. You have to know the Halachot of Oisik Bittal What am I losing this against this Rabotai? This is why Rabotai, if you always ask yourself, 
For example, I'll give you another example. The Allah brings down in, the, in Simon bed also, when a person is inside the bathroom. Sometimes we feel that we could be undressed fully because we're in the bathroom. Allah says not like that. Allah says a person, even when a person is making, he has to be fully covered unless he is showering. Because then you, you have no other choice. But that's the only way to do it. So, fine. But Rabotai, you have to learn the Allah in order to be able to ask yourself those questions. Am I doing what Hashem wants me to do or not? Now, yes or no. And a lot of times you will be surprised, Rabotai. You'll ask yourself, do I have to go to this place? Do I have to be there? Or even when you're learning Torah, you, you, you're tired, you can't do it. Or you can't even down, you have no strength, you, you, you're done. Rabotai, but you ask yourself, Hashem, what do you want from me? You ask in your mind, do you, do you want me to learn or you want me to sleep or do you want me not to have kawana? Rabotai, when you speak to yourself, that's what he's about to do this. Once you start speaking to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, he puts it in your mind and he answers you. I want you to daven. I want you to learn more. See the strength that you have after this. Rabotai, see the strength that you're going to have after this. But all this comes with one thing, Rabotai. Yirad Hashem to Sif Yamim. Remember this whole Rabotai. Do not allow anyone else to tell you otherwise. Because this is a clear of Moshe Chaim Nutato. He says anything that brings you close to Hashem, you stick to them like honey to, like bees to honey. Anything that even furthers you, a, an iota from Hashem Rabotai, you run from them like you would run from the Twin Towers when they were on fire. Do not, do not allow people to steal your Rosh Hashanah this year. Change yourself, become better Rabotai if you're ready. Hit 40, 50, what you got left? Rabotai, what do you have left? The Gemara says if you make it to 60, it's good. 70 is old, a ripe age. 80 would barely you're gonna make it. What you got left, Rabotai? Wake up. Let's wake up, Rabotai, and let's change. And let's beat the change. Baruch Allah, Amen.